Apple ProRes RAW, cinema look, 6K, probably the best full frame camera on the market today for filmmakers. I'm here with Panasonic Europe ambassador Nick Driftwood to talk about the brand new S1H. So, Nick, can you let us know what is different than the S1 and all the other cameras in the Lumix area? Okay, yeah, there's so many exciting video features and functionality that you know the list goes on and on and on as you've seen. Obviously, this is a 6K camera. And it's also a world first 420 10 bit 50p, 60p full frame camera. So this will do full frame, super 35, pixel for pixel. We have multi aspect ratio support for anamorphic lenses. We do 6K ProRes RAW. This is the Apple ProRes RAW codec. We're showing at the moment 5.9K in 25p and 30p. And who knows what's going to happen in the future? There might be other different resolutions. But it's also got a lot more functionality, especially for the video enthusiast and filmmaker. And we see this camera as that sort of bridge, really, into a high-end professional level. So from the GH5, GH5S, the S1 even, that hybrid camera, which is great for photography and video, this has got so much more built-in video functionality that we expect people to sort of make that lovely leap into professional filmmaking. So in terms of the technical specifications, what are the differences in between the S1 and the S1H? Well, the S1, as you know, probably does, you know, 24p, 25p, 30p. This will do a whole range of different settings for recording at different frame rates, different higher frame rates. For example, in FHD, we can record 120 frames per second whilst recording the audio at the same time. You haven't got that on the S1. You know, we've got the 6K RAW at 5.9. We've got a 5.4 resolution in 16.9, 5.9 at 3 by 2 using the full resolution of the sensor. The other settings go down to the 3 by 2 APS-C setting, rather, for anamorphic as well. So we've got such a plethora of different codec choices. We have HEVC 200 megabits per second at these very high 6K internal rates which as you know is half the data rate of H.264 but for the same quality. And I think the noise reduction is much better as well. What um, about the recording options in terms of the memory cards that you can use? I think they are different from the S1. Yes, right. We've now got two, like the GH5, GH5S, we've now returned back to the dual SD card slot. So you can dual record at the same time, backup record, or you can hot swap record between the two AB slots. So there's also no limitation to the recording time for one clip, right? Absolutely, you can record forever on this camera. As you know, the S1, there is a bit of a limit, 30 minute limit. Vlog comes in built. We have a waveform function, which you can obviously make larger or smaller, depending on how big you want it on screen. We have dual zebras now, so you can expose for, you know, like middle gray, 42% skin tones, as well as doing your highlights. The vector scope is on here too. So I think the S1 didn't have the waveform. We've several improvements in terms of, I would say, noise reduction and V-log. It looks better in the color science, very close to the Varicam 35 look. In fact, the actual curve at 640 ISO is dual ISO, by the way. Let's not forget that, like the GH5S was, and also like the Varicam series. This has got a low ISO of 640. Those for the dark, we have an ISO range of 4,000. And that means there's two analog circuits on top of the sensor, which will give you the same signal to noise ratio. The noise floor is very clean for shooting in daylight and in low light at different times. So yeah, you've got it all covered in the S1H. So summing this up and being an ambassador, so you're a filmmaker yourself, what is it you do like the most about this camera? What are your preferences when thinking about this camera and shooting with it in real life? Well, I'm shooting a lot with the Panasonic EVA1, which is behind us. And I'm used to shooting in Apple ProRes RAW in 5.7K via SDI. To have RAW, Apple ProRes RAW over HDMI, working with Atomos in the tiny Ninja 5, you know, it's incredible. So I'm really portable, really lightweight, getting superior quality, the color tonality of RAW, 
and the highlight recovery. And let's not forget noise reduction in a raw codec like the Apple ProRes RAW. It's just so much more cleaner than using an inbuilt or a traditional codec.